So I'm trying to do an astrophotography comparison. Over to my left, I have the Samsung S20 along with the iPhone 13. And to my right on this tripod down here, I have the Sony a7R4 with the 20 millimeter f2.8 lens. We can only shoot it at the 30 millimeter equivalent, which is the APS-C mode, but still f2.8. So it's 30 millimeters um, f2.8. And I just heard a coyote, man, that thing is loud. So yeah, we got about an hour, hour and a half before it gets dark. And now the coyotes are going, can you hear that? Oh, I hope you can hear that. Oh, that's a lot of them. They're right over that hill. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. So yeah, <laughs> so if you hear me over the coyotes, we got them at an hour, hour and a half before it gets dark. And I'm gonna do three comparisons. Sony, uh, we have the Sony a7R4, the Samsung S20, and the iPhone 13. I will be very surprised if any of the, any of the phones actually um, stand up to the Sony. That would be great. And that is so distracting. Gosh, I wanna be over there. Mm, I wanna be over there, all right. Give it another hour, it's gonna get dark. This this is gonna get very grainy because when I get my night night vision on, any light just trashes trashes the eyes. But yeah, let's let's hang tight. Maybe they'll come in closer too. Okay, we have about 45 minutes before it gets real dark. And I am in South Dakota, by the way, so it is extremely dark here. Uh, do not expect the same results if you're near a town, a big city, or anything like that because you get light pollution. There's a place you can go out to, I think it's called Dark Skies or dark, DarkSkiesNet.com. I'll put the link down where you can see what your light pollution ratio is and how your skies are around you. So, you know, looking at the iPhone or any of these, these cameras, probably not gonna be the same results. You might get better, might get worse. There's also kind of a limitation. There is what we call one over 500, the 500 rule. Whatever your millimeter lens is divided into 500, whatever that comes out to kind of your seconds is how far you can do the exposure without, you know, blurring. So if you have a 13 millimeter, you can expose it longer than let's say a 25 or a 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter, you get 10 second exposure divides in there 10 to 500. If you have a 13 or if you have a 26, you can probably get maybe 20 seconds, maybe longer or something like that. So some of the issues that I see with some of the astrophotography is they go too long. It seems like the stars are, are, they get that blurring or comma effect. So I kind of tend to go on the conservative ratio because I like the, sh the stars sharp. I like them to be kind of very punchy and that. So it might not quite be as bright, but at least they don't get that bleeding or that blurry look where everything's just kind of a jargled mess. Anyway, that's, that's it. Got about another 45 minutes and we'll wait it out. Coyotes have gone to bed or they're out hunting I guess probably more so yeah all right we're back home I had a, a chance to really kind of unload these photographs kind of figure out what's going on and yeah there's a lot to digest I'm going to tell you guys what I think is the best DSLR or mirrorless I should say camera brand for astrophotography and it's not a brand you would typically think of it's not the first on your lips to, to speak out so let's get into this um, I'm gonna show you a quick photo earlier today some of the the photographs that I took with the iPhone 13 max in I guess in a stream that I was passing by and this is done with slow shutter and I'm pretty impressed with the slow shutter app this is without an ND filter look up ND filter it's an extra filter that goes and kind of you know, dims your exposure down so you can get a slow exposure so you can get water, that blurry water. And if we go to the next photo, this is it. This is like a 20 or 30 second exposure in broad daylight of um, water passing through a stream. I could not do this with the Samsung S20. Everything was sharp because these lenses, these small camera lenses have like an F1.2 or F1.5 um, F-stop. So it lets in a lot of light. 
and normally with every other camera without slow shutter app on the iPhone 13, I have to use an ND filter. And that is in, in addition to like the Sony a7R 4 So this gave me hope for, for astrophotography, looking at these two photos. Um, the detail's pretty good, but you get that nice kind of creamy water. But things, <clears throat> I should say, things quickly fell apart once we got into the dark and started using the slow shutter app for, for astrophotography. And for the most part, just to say this guys, it, it, um, it just fell apart. It was unusable. So slow shutter and really, really dark conditions. I've have issues with, um, color and color correctness. And it was just bringing in all kinds of noise and everything else that I could, I could think about. So, I tried Beast, um, the Beast Cam and Filmic Pro. They have a, a photography application as well. But the problem with those two on the iPhone Max 13 and, and the other iPhones is you do not get a long exposure. You get maybe one or two seconds max. So any kind, of, anything with astrophotography, you're going to need probably 10, 10 seconds all the way up to minutes. And you're just not going to get enough light in. So this really pushed my iPhone 13 photography after all this trial and error to use the native app, their night mode, what they call night mode. And that's really kind of um, sporadic of what the exposure will be because you have zero control over the application as far as exposure time in that. Not like, unlike the Sony a7R 4 which you can say, you know, you can go into the minutes and actually the Samsung S20 Ultra, you can get 30 second exposure time, which is, which is awesome. So let's dive into this first photo. This is with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and it doesn't look too bad. There's off to the left, down below, there is kind of what I call an anchor point. That's just a trailer that I wanted to try to get into the rest of the photos. But you can see there's the Milky Way. You can look at that, and it looks actually looks pretty good. It's surprising. Now, if we zoom in, we can go to some of the things I, I kind of dislike about astrophotography. I like to keep things a little sharper, and the stars got that little blurring or that com that comment of coming i said comma effect on it and that let's go to the next photo this is the sony a7r4 with the 30 millimeter lens f 2.8 let's look at the the stat here and the information it is 15 second exposure f 3.2 iso 6400 and we go to the iphone 10 second exposure f 1.5 6400 so some of the things that does not make sense here is the fact that I'm getting more blurring with the iPhone version than I am the Sony version. And by comparison, let's go and look at the Samsung S20 version. Now, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see kind of not as much blurring going on. And this was a, I think it was a 15 second exposure ISO 3200. And it's pretty close. It's kind of in between the iPhone and the Sony a7R4. And just by comparison, let's go look at this star, this big old star here. You can see a little bit of blurring. And then we'll shrink that back down. And we'll go back up. And you see that maybe a little less blurry. And then let's go to the Samsung. And we see it here as well. So very close between the Samsung and the Apple or iPhone, but the I would definitely say the Sony A7R4 R4 definitely is the winner. That's not a surprise. So where does this lead us? Right now, um, with computational photography, the two photos I showed at the beginning, if they get this figured out, uh, it's definitely going to change the game for astrophotography my opinion. I'll tell you why. I mentioned talking about the best brand for astrophotography, and that is Pentex. Believe it or not, Pentex has what they call a built-in star tracker. It uses their movable sensor because they got in-body stabilization. And what they're able to do is to tilt and shift the sensor and track a star so you don't get that little earth rotation movement when you're doing astrophotography. So literally, it's a star tracker built into the DSLR, the Pentex um, brand of a DSLR, whichever one you want. They all have it kind of built in. So you don't have to purchase an add-on kit. So star trackers are generally, you know, a couple hundred 
on up. The, the Pentex is already built in. You can do a 30-second you know, to four-minute exposure with this. And this really does help in making your, your stars kind of, you know, that sharp look. The reason why I bring this up is, to me, that's the best camera. If you're going to do astrophotography right now, the Pentex brands are the best system to go with. But this gives us hope for, you know, an iPhone with slow shutter application with anything. Because as soon as they start putting IBIS or in-body stabilization into the camera system, they'll definitely be able to track the stars from here on out. Think about that. That's that's you, They know all the Earth's rotation. They know where you're at. They know all these different things because it's got a, a GPS on it. It's got all this computational. It should be able to, in theory, when someone builds the application, be able to take absolutely awesome uh, astrophotography shots. Something that probably will not be able to do with the bare stock Sony a7R4 in that. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited. Is it there yet? No, it's got a ways to go. They got some things to work out. And probably some of the results were on me not being uh, familiar with how to get, you know, the sharpest photos and that. But just overall, there there's some kinks to work out with, you know, you I want to dive into the camera and get to the guts of being able to take the photo. And right now, you know, Apple iPhone 13 is not quite allowing me that. Samsung did pretty well. I would say Sony, Samsung and then Apple, if I had to choose the photos, the, the ones that I like and that. But yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope this helps. If you've got comments, questions, concerns, write them down below, and I will see you in a couple weeks.